You see this goofy guy? Yeah, well, we're going to make him your next BBEG, because why not? And we're going to do so by answering the five questions you see on screen. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what flail snails are, we'll quickly look at them. And to do that, we're going to be using their Monsters of the Multiverse version. But there's also a variation in Volos right here. So they're weak elements that are sought after for their multicolored shells and special abilities. You see, a flail snail shell has anti-magic properties, granting advantage on saving throws against spells and imposing disadvantage on spell attacks made against it. On top of this, it can store spell damage and reflect a part of it back against its opponents. So obviously, these are traits many creatures would desire. Then when it comes to their special lore abilities, Flail snails consume all they slither over, including rocks, dirt, and sand. And they also leave behind a glassy residue that can be used to create glass structures everywhere they stroll. So this is why some people dedicate their livelihoods to following flail snails and selling what they leave in their wake. There are a few other cool things about flail snails you can find in their respective books. But just with this and a few homebrew changes, we have enough to make an epic villain. So first, we're going to up its intelligence to at least 10, since it's hard to have a complete idiot in charge of our evil organization. Secondly, we need to give it a way to communicate. You can customize this any way you want, but for our purposes, we'll say it can telepathically speak primordial, and to justify this, simply say it's an evolutionary trait. Next, we'll say flail snails are outrageously rare in your world, which will help set up how our snail builds its empire since it will have a valued commodity, that being its glass. Then we'll make our snail's bottom incredibly adhesive on command, giving it a climb speed but also a really strong grip. And finally, we'll make it medium size and both will become prevalent later. So now all that's out of the way, it's time to talk about our villain's origin story. Our flail snail, who we'll call Izith, found his way into the material plane after some funky magic on his home plane opened up a portal that sucked him inside. After traveling for years, he found people were following the glistening trails he would naturally leave behind and harvesting materials that were worthless back home but clearly had some significance in the material plane, which he discovered much later would be the ability to produce incredible wealth. Izith was then captured by a bandit group and forced to produce these materials for their leader exclusively. He was also tormented and tortured when he failed to comply. And the combination of random people's greed and the violent nature of his captors caused him to slowly foster a disgust for humanity and a desire to never be pushed around again. But as Izith plotted for a way out, the bandit leader was increasingly critical of one of his underlings, a turtle named Yannick. And after Yannick failed to produce something for the bandit crew, the leader shattered the turtle shell as punishment, utterly embarrassing him. Yannick was also the only bandit who knew how to speak primordial and was brought on specifically to communicate with Izith. And when Izith witnessed Yannick be humiliated, he also saw an opportunity to get out, for Yannick was quite a gifted swordsman. Over a couple of years, Izith would talk with Yannick and before friend him while Yannick taught Izith the common tongue. And during this time, he slowly and surely manipulated Yannick by pushing thoughts in his head about how Yannick doesn't deserve his mistreatment and that he should be a leader of his own crew. He should be the one who reaps the rewards. He deserves all he wants in this world. And after two years of being enslaved and manipulating Yannick, he convinced Yannick to kill the bandits guarding him and the two ran away together. And with Yannick's impressive martial prowess and our snail's unlimited money factory and total drive for control over his own destiny, the two created a business empire. Yannick acts as the frontman and muscle, whereas Izith is the true mastermind. They started selling out what Izith naturally deposited, but as they grew richer and richer, they expanded into countless enterprises, which makes it easy for you to simply pick 
one that suits your campaign and toss the two into it. And with this a large amount of influence and wealth, your big bad can get some crazy minions. And because Izith has absolutely no love for humanity and Yannick is being completely manipulated, there is no end to the vile acts you can have our two antagonists perform. So you can customize these acts in a way to make sure they conflict with your party's goals and morals. Also, because Izith has a desire to control his own destiny and make sure he is never vulnerable again, it's completely within his character to search out powerful magical artifacts, rituals, allies, and so on. All of which are more potential ways to tie Izith into your campaign. So now that we have all this, let's talk about what happens when the inevitable combat clash happens between your players and our villain. You can customize and create any stat block you want based on your needs, but I'll supply one for you in the description below just in case. But what's important to remember is Yannick doesn't have a shell anymore and our flail snail is smaller than average, granting him not only a beautifully colored shell, but also creating one Omega stat block where Yannick gains the Flail Snail's anti-magic shell and scintillating shell traits, which makes our powerful deadly swordsman far more dangerous. And depending on how good you make Yannick's modifiers, saving throws, and AC, it can become really difficult for your players to land a hit. And if you give your swordsman legendary actions and resistances, oh boy does he become a badass. But this two-body Megazord build also creates more engagement for your players because they can choose to spend an action to try and rip the snail off of Yannick so fighting him is much more manageable since Yannick will become weaker in pretty much every regard. And so with the crazy mechanics, wild origin story, easy integration, and totally absurd outward appearance, this is a villain that can pump tons of fun and shenanigans into your D&D campaign. But that's just one way of using a flail snail in your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And if you do use this in your future games, make sure to let me know how it goes. Also, of course, I'm always accepting challenges, so feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching and indulging my hidden nerdy side.